I'm Ben Shirley, I'm a senior lecturer at University of Salford. I do a lot of work on audio related accessibility and I'm here because I was chairing the session on accessible immersive experiences. And one of the um, topics of conversation that came up yesterday in the session was um, using graphics overlays in uh, live sporting experiences. Can you share a bit more about what was discussed then? Yes, some of the detail was coming out from uh, Jamie from BT Sport, who was saying about their new uh, package that's coming out, BT Ultimate, where they will change the graphical overlays depending on the device you're looking at. So uh, it would be different on a large screen TV, it would be different on a m mobile phone, different on a tablet depending on the size of the screen but they can also change characteristics such as the contrast and the size of the uh, clock, the score, all of that kind of thing for people with um, visual impairments. And one of the questions that came through um, during the discussion on Slido um, was about uh, people who are colorblind and um, creating uh, the um, opportunity for them to watch snooker matches, uh, tournaments. Um, can you share some of the discussion around that? Yeah, it was my favourite question, I think. Um, helping colourblind people to understand what was happening in the snooker, and it reminded me of the, uh, the the famous comment on, I think it was BBC commentary, when people, lots of black and white TVs were still around, and the, part of the commentary was about if you, uh, for those watching on black and white TVs, the green ball's the one behind the blue one, <laughs> which I thought showed up the problem quite nicely. Yeah, um, yeah Jamie talked about being able to use uh, filters as part of the process, which would accentuate the different differences between some of those and they don't cover snooker but he was talking about it in the context of football so um, obviously the contrast between different players football strips could be quite difficult to understand if you have particular kinds of colour blindness and I'm aware that there's kind of filter overlays that can be used as part of the production process or as part of the reproduction process at the TV set in order to accentuate the differences and make that better for people who are, are colour blind. Some of the other things that were discussed were about um, creating more interactive experiences using immersive um, accessible technologies. Yeah. Can you share some more about that? Yeah, there was a lot of conversation, conversation around the kind of uh, technologies that have been developed in order to make uh, immersive experiences happen can also um, facilitate different kinds of uh, access services. So uh, there was a lot of talk about how you could adapt current access services, but also how you could add additional ones. And Rupert referred to some of the work that we've been doing at Salford, actually, around object-based audio and being able to change the mix of the audio at the home based on um, individual needs, whether that's a hearing impairment or whether it's because you're on a noisy train traveling or for whatever reason you could, you could change the mix or simplify the mix to uh, suit your specific needs. Fantastic. And just finally, um, can you share um, some of the key things that you've learned from TechShare Pro or that you're hoping to learn later on today? Yeah, it's been a really inspiring event. Actually, it's been uh, fascinating. Lots of in lots of insight into what different organisations are doing and different facets of accessibility. Um, a lot of talk, which I've picked up on about uh, embedding it into business as usual, so it becoming part of a suite of personalisation options, some of which would be for anybody who might who might just have a particular preference for something, but accessibility options being embedded in those means that it's much more likely to go mainstream and much more attractive to broadcasters and broadcast technology companies.